What's happening? What's happening? Hello, my name is Brad Harden, and I'm the host of the brand new show here on the Hoop Ball Network, Hoop Ball Hawks, where we cover everything regarding the Atlanta Hawks, from box score breakdown, training camp, free agency, the rumor mill. You love John Collins? You love Ice Trey? You love JR Crickets? Well, check us out. Follow us at Hoop Ball Hawks on Twitter. Follow myself at Brad Jarrett. 67 on Twitter and we hope y'all check us out. The following is a hoop bowl presentation. Welcome back to another episode of Today in Sports Betting. It is me, as always. Well, not as recently as always, but I am Ira Silver. I'm joined alongside with my fellow co-host, Devin Game 7 Ellington at D-A-L-E-007. We got a fantastic show for you today. Before we say hello to Devin, just want to remind everybody that this podcast is brought to you by Manscaped.com. They have the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0 with their water resistant technology. It is fantastic. I recommend it. Devin does too. Go pick one up today at manscaped.com. Type in the promo code HOOPBALL20. That's H O O P B A L L 20 manscaped.com and get 20% off and free shipping. What a deal. Devin, what's up, buddy? How are you? I'm doing well. And speaking of Manscaped, have you seen the new Gronk commercial? I have not. Okay, well, I, I saw it for the first time today. Uh, pretty much he's standing in the backyard behind a huge shrub and talking to his wife and telling her that he can't find her balls, or can't, he can't find his balls. And, uh, yeah, it talks about the lawnmower 3.0. So, long story short. All right, man, I love it. Uh, Gronk is a very funny dude, and I'm sure he made a, uh, a nice contribution to manscaped.com. But go pick one up, type in the promo code hoopball 20 for 20% off and free shipping. Devin, we are recording Wednesday late night here on the East Coast. We uh, try to fit this one in for the listeners so we can break down some games. we got a lot to talk about. As you said offline, we got a magic Thursday filled with magics. Iris Silver magic, Ryan Fitz magic. Who else is there? Uh, magic Mike Gisecki. Magic Mike Gisecki. Uh, uh, Minshew magic. Minshew, Minshew magic. magic. I like calling him musty, Mustache Minshew. Yeah, both are very good. You can't complain about either. Yeah, man. Well, let's break down uh, this Thursday night football game that we have tomorrow uh, at, or today. If you're listening on Thursday, this will probably be released early in the morning on Thursday. We have a special guest on on Friday and Saturday as well. So make sure you tune into those episodes. Uh, Thursday night football, we got the Miami Dolphins. At the Jacksonville Jaguars, Jaguars are minus three here. Dolphins getting three points on the short road to Jacksonville. And it's plus three, minus 115 for the Dolphins over and under 48 here. Um, My first thoughts are is that Miami getting a field goal here is probably a decent spot. Uh, Although the Jaguars have looked really good. But, you know, Fitzmagic always can work some primetime magic on Thursday Night Football and uh, get, get, put some points on the board. So, you know, always got to be wary of that backdoor cover by the Dolphins. Uh, I'm kind of looking at the over the total mm. of 48 here. Uh, a lot of these football games have been going over the total. Uh, you know, this is just another classic spot Thursday night. I mean, you're going to have some fans in the stands because Jacksonville does have some fans. But uh, it's not going to be a full crowd as usual in Jacksonville, even if it was a regular season game. (laughs) And, uh, you know, these offenses are really clicking right now on all cylinders and have a lot going on on offense, Uh, not too much crowd noise. And I just think over the total of 48 is a decent play here. Or if you want to go ahead and tease this game, I'd probably tease the Dolphins up to 10 and this this total down uh, and play the over at uh, 41. I like both of those angles. It's a good game to tease. Like you said, it's going to be the magic show. I think there's going to be lots of points. And, um, you know, I was looking at a first quarter over perhaps. It's at nine and a half. 
minus 115. I think both teams can score a touchdown in the first quarter. They're going to come out loose, uh, loosey and juicy. Um, and then, you know, like you said, full game over is a nice way to play. Um, one uh, side note, DJ Shark, he's missed practice every day this week. He's highly questionable. DJ Shark, do, 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 do. DJ yeah. Shark, do, do, do. <laughs> Thanks. Now I got to try to go to bed after this, Ira. Yeah, I know. It's going to be in my head too. But, uh, you know, it's a song that I want everyone to listen to. If you're not familiar with it, and if you are familiar with it, well, it's going to be in your head all day Thursday leading up to this football game. Yeah. It's a banger. Listen, man, sometimes you got to make yourself memorable. You know what I mean? So <laughs> if people just remember me singing shark doo do 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 you know, I- I'm okay with it. Uh, you know, if they follow my picks, great. If not, that's okay too, but as long as they heard me sing a little bit on air, I'm okay with it. Absolutely. Uh, any football games you want to talk about? I, I have one game in particular, uh, maybe two games. Maybe two games I'm looking at here um, for Sunday. I know you're going to do a breakdown football show with a special guest mm-hmm. uh, that you're going to release. Uh, maybe you'll throw in some NFL. I know you're probably going to call it, cover some college football, but uh, you know. There's one game in particular I'm really circling right now and I really like, and that is a stinker. It's, you know, as I said with uh, – I was on uh, Fox Sports Radio Philadelphia with oh, the, yeah, the yeah. Shander show, Aton Shander, shout out to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I said the same exact thing I'm going to say now. It's, it's a stinker of a game, yeah. and it is a stinker uh, with Odell, Odell Beckham in there, uh, no pun intended. Uh, but the Browns minus seven against the Washington football team. Uh, this Washington football team is pretty mediocre at best, in my opinion, based on the eye test and the numbers. Uh, they were lucky to, uh, you know, keep it so competitive against the Eagles. And they had a le- little bit of a comeback against the Cardinals. But, uh, you know, for me, I like the Browns here. Their offensive line has really protected Baker Mayfield all year. And, you know, if you were yeah. listening to the show with JVT as well, uh, the, the guest we had on, Jonathan Von Tobel, you know, he brought, he brought it up a really good point. You know, uh, even though they're under their first-year offensive coordinator, their offensive line is very, very solid. And he's going to be stingy with it. He's going to be uh, sticky with it. And I'm going to be sticky with it. I'm going to bet the Browns again. Uh, I think I'm going to go try to go 0 for 3 with the Browns this week. But I think – the Browns get the cover here at minus seven. What about you? Um, you know, that's a good game. I was looking at that one, trying to figure out how to play on that. Um, I have a quick question for you, though. I just want to kind of get your opinion before I give one of these games out. Um, with the overs hitting at such a high rate, are you trying to just kind of stay away from unders right now? Or, or do you want to see if the numbers balance out? Or I've been teasing a lot of numbers uh, with uh, uh, going over. Sure. Uh, I, I played a teaser on Sunday. I did not put it out on, on the Bird app on Twitter, but I did play a teaser with a lot of overs, uh, teased it down, played the hmm. overs, and it was pretty successful. Um, there's one teaser in particular I've already locked in uh, for one unit, and that's uh, the total in the Jacksonville-Miami game, over 41 uh, the total uh, in the Raiders New England game over 40 and a half. Uh, the Cleveland Browns down to pick them. Um, what else? Oh, over 47 and a half Detroit Lions, Arizona Cardinals. Uh, I actually, I had one leg tonight ahead. I didn't even realize that over 207 in the Boston game. So that was I got a good there. So, yeah, I only got five legs of the teaser left. And then the last part of the teaser was the Dallas Cowboys uh, plus seven. Uh, against the I believe they're playing the Seattle Seahawks this week and mm-hmm. I'm not a big believer in the Seahawks team I think they're a little overrated here I think the line is a little too inflated for my liking and I like the Cowboys plus five and a half and I like them on the tee so that's my that's my little teaser that I have I'm sure I'll throw in one more with all totals uh, Sunday morning before we get kicked off here but uh, that's my little tease of the week if anybody wants to fade or follow me I hit a nice little big teaser uh, last Sunday. So I'll give that one out and hopefully this one hits as well. Yeah. Um, so one game I talked about with Sam Paniatovich earlier in the week or today. Shout out to Sam. Mr. Sam, uh, SP shoot. Uh, Cincinnati plus five on the road at, in Philadelphia. Um, Philly I lost like another I, offensive I think, lineman. I, I think Philly's horrible. I really, really think Philly's horrible. I think Carson Wentz is super overrated. They don't have a gunslinging offense. Right. Uh, they they like to you know run the ball and short plays, tight ends, and 
uh, this Bengals team is, is, is feisty, uh, especially mm. with Joe Burrow in there. And, and at plus five, I mean, Teases they could win this game. They, they could win this game outright. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what are they on the money line? Uh, plus 185. Plus 185, yeah, yeah. exactly. Give me exactly. that. Devin, uh, before we get into um, your thoughts, I want to hear your, your, your more elaborated thoughts on that game, but um, did you miss me, buddy? It's been a while since we've been it has. together. It has. I was actually just thinking that. We got that telepathy thing going. <laughs> it's been a minute, <laughs> but, yeah, it seems like we're on the same wavelength here. So give me, give me your overall thoughts on that game. I'm interested to hear what you have to say. On the Cincinnati-Philly game? Yeah. Um, you know – Carson Wentz didn't get sacked last game, but he was pressured and hurried on a high rate. Cincinnati's got guys like Sam Hubbard. They're going to get Geno Atkins back, if I'm not mistaken. They got some pretty solid play in the linebacking court. Young, but solid. Uh, Some tackling machines in there. Um, So, I mean, like I said, the Eagles lost another offensive lineman. So, I think they're down four starters on their line. Um, No receivers still. So... You know, I mean, I think if anyone's going to be able to get a sack, it'll be Sam Hubbard. The kid is just really talented on the outside. Um, So, yeah, like I said, I might throw that uh, Cincinnati plus points in the teaser that you just gave out and maybe combine those with some other things I like and some teasers. Um, It's hard not to like the Bengals in this spot. Joe Burrow's chasing his first win. He's a winner. He wants to win. And what I mean, it would be cool to beat Carson Wentz. So Am I crazy? Am I crazy right now? But 14 to 1 on the Jags to win the AFC South. Dude, dude. It was all right. So I said it the other uh Kansas City podcast I was doing for a little bit before I moved back home. I was talking about the Jags making noise in that division. So go for it, buddy. I mean, you know, it's uh it's they dang near beat the uh Titans. Yeah, no, I, I. It's tough to give up fourteen to one, but yeah, uh, you know they're not they're not they're not great, but they can they can score points. So, and mm-hmm. I love Mustache Minshew, Minshew Magic. I mean, I'm a Pac-12 guy, and uh, you know I love when he transferred over to Washington State, played mm-hmm. for Mike Leach there, and I think he's a really good quarterback, and I think he's going to be in the NFL for quite some time. Yeah, can I throw one more NFL game out there? I won't t- talk too long. Just uh, a line I like. And you Let's can give it. me a yay or a nay. Do the Chuck Norris thing or whatever. Uh, okay. Chicago plus three against Atlanta. I think from my silence, you know where I'm going. It, it's pretty uh, decisive. It, it's such a tight line, dude. I mean, yeah. the, 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 this line is – I was looking at it, and uh, especially after the meltdown Atlanta had last week uh, mm. against the Cowboys, it's hard for me to bet on the Falcons, man. It's really – I had them last week. I bet on the Falcons last week. I had them in the Super Contest and the Circa Millions Contest. And, you know, even though they, they lost the game, they still covered. Uh, so mm. I was happy. But how do you blow that kind of lead? I mean, it's just it's, – it seems like it runs in the organization. Same head coach. And uh, I don't know if you listen to the show with Sam, but I said that we need to just – uh, put it in the faces of Atlanta people now, and we're not going to say twenty-eight and three anymore. We're going to say four forty and zero. Yeah, I mean that was the number of teams before them that had been successful in that same position, scoring that many points and having no turnovers. Yep. Well, moving along, uh, we got some baseball to talk about. Let's break down a few games here. I see some lines. Uh, I don't know if you want to break down all the games, but let's try and run through a little bit of the card here. We got the Chicago Cubs against Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, the Cubs are going to be minus 180 here on the overnight line against the Pittsburgh Pirates, plus 170. The Pirates did win tonight, 2-1. Yeah. to one. Uh, Over-unders, 9. Do you have any thoughts on this, uh, this feisty baseball game? You know, normally I like to go under in Chad Cole starts because he's such a power-dominant pitcher that, you know, his steam in the beginning of the game is so much more effective instead of the, you know, third, fourth time through the lineup. Um, But Alec Mills, if you recall, last start, he threw a no-hitter, and historically pitchers coming off no-hitters in their next start, it's not that great. So, um, you know, just keep an eye on that. I originally did, like, the first five under. going to stay away from it. Um, no true opinion other than that. A uh, little bit of analysis. All right, next game on the board, we got the Rockies against the San Francisco Giants. Rockies plus two dollars. San Francisco minus two thirty-five. Over and under nine in this one. Uh, any? I don't really have any leans or thoughts on this game, so I'm going to throw it to you. 
A lot of questionable and out indefinitely tags in here. Uh, Yaz, you know, he's questionable. I don't think he played tonight, if I remember right. That's why Dubon got the start. Um, Maybe look at like a team total over. That's what I did tonight. You know, and as we were getting the show set up, they went over. Um, It's team totals five right now for San Fran tomorrow. Only three and a half for the Rockies. I think the market is adjusting to them losing Arenado um, for the year. So three and a half for the Rockies. I think that's a pretty solid start. Gosman, he can give up some walks and some home runs. So a multiple run homer is not out of sight. So next game on the board, we got the, uh, the New York Mets against the Washington Nationals Mets minus one Oh five Washington minus one Oh five over under nine runs. Do you know who I don't see who's pitching in this one. Uh, I've got Drew Peterson. Who's a lefty. 3.80 3.80 ERA or David Peterson. I'm sorry, five and two on the year uh, for the Mets. Then Patrick Corbin, the big lefty, two and six, 4.76 ERA. So um, I'm looking at the over. You said nine, yeah. Nine, yeah. yeah. I mean, these teams are terrible. Yeah, Nationals those bullpens are terrible. Terrible bullpens. Uh, we won't spend too much time, more time on that game, but. Uh, Next game on the board, we got the Chicago White Sox against the Indians. Uh, White Sox are the favorite in this one. No, the Cleveland Indians are a favorite here in this one. Minus 120, White Sox plus 110, I see here. Um, any thoughts for you on this game in particular? Um, it looks like the probable pitchers are going to be uh, Dallas Keuchel for the uh, White Sox against Plesak for the Indians. Plesak's having a pretty se- pretty solid season for him to 1.85 ERA whip of below one. Uh, Keuchel as well has been pitching pretty well this season. Six and two, two ERA with a 1.1 whip. Uh, what do you uh, what do you think here? I'm looking at the first five under. I hit on it today. It's an easy one with teams over 500 especially division opponents and with teams that have really good pitching um the cleveland indians for first five unders i mean they're the most profitable team in that de- uh, department if i'm not mistaken uh, fact check me as always please um downgrade for the indians against lefties i mean francisco lindor does pretty well he hits 309 290 from jordan luplau um uh, so, I mean, you got 358, Jose Ramirez. But Jose Ramirez is the hottest hitter in the league right now. So, but yeah, uh, first five under is my first look at it. I'll probably take it again. Might go ahead and throw two units on it. New York Yankees against the Toronto Blue Jays. And we got a uh, pitching duel here. We got mm-hmm. Montgomery with a 5.12 ERA on the year. The lefty for the Yankees against Ryu. Uh, sounds like a street fighter character. Am I wrong? I was refraining from saying the same thing. (laughs) Uh, Four and two on the year, three ERA whip of 1.1. I don't see a line here, but uh, I think the Yankees are most likely going to be favored in this one, uh, you would think, after the Blue Jays uh, crushed them and annihilated them tonight in great street fighter fashion. Uh, (laughs) What uh, what do you got to say about this one? I'm staying away from this one. The Yankees burnt me twice today. They didn't hit their team total over, and they also uh, blew my first five, them covering on the money line bet. So I am going to look away from it. You know, all good things must come to an end, right? I know, I know. We've been hitting on the team total Yankees. We've been hitting on the first five Yankees. You know, eventually it's going to catch up to you at some point. So maybe they restart tomorrow. Miami Marlins against the Atlanta Braves. Braves minus 170. Miami plus 160. Uh, You got Anderson on the mound for the Braves. 3-1, 2.36 ERA with a 1.05 whip against Mr. Lopez and the Miami Mm -hmm. Marlins. 5-4, 4 ERA, 1.22 whip. Uh, I see here that the – I think I gave out the lines already, right? Minus one – I'm minus 180 now, I see. And uh, Miami Marlins, plus 160. Uh, what do you got to say about this one? I, like I, I actually I actually took a stab with the Marlins' first five tonight. Didn't really, yeah, didn't really that work. didn't really work, did it? No. Um, well, and then that was really weird because Max Freed, I think he came out of the game again. Uh, so In like the first the, inning. Yeah, the, the – um, oh, and, man, if we're talking about 
losing first five bets. Freaking Steve Clevenger, he went one, two, three for me on the Padres. And then Mike Clevenger. Or yeah, that guy. Sorry. Um, yeah, so that, that kind of stunk. Um, I actually like first five under here. I think you can get four and a half or five. Um, five and a half. Heck yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that a lot. Um, two teams over 500, division opponents. That system I follow on action. Um, it, it wouldn't have worked, worked out for you tonight, though. No, it wouldn't have, which is why I'm only going first five. I want, I want that smaller, or that smaller uh, you know, risk. All right, we got the Baltimore Birdies, the Orioles, plus 130 against the Boston Red Sox, minus 140. Uh, Boston's going to be rolling out Perez on the mound, the lefty, uh, posting a 3-4 and four record, 3.88 ERA, and uh, Cobb on the mound for the Orioles. He is 1-5 uh, yeah. with a 4.76 ERA, 1.37 whip. Um, man, tough game. Any thoughts for you here? I'm man. I I think these pitchers are probably going to get hit hard. Um, Boston scored what like nine runs tonight. Uh, Baltimore hits lefties really well, like really really well. I think one of their they're the uh, one of the top hitting teams against lefties. Um, Perez has put a couple decent starts together in his last few attempts, so I think it's going to be time for him to allow some runs early, and then I I you know over nine and a half over ten. Uh, I like it. And then maybe looking at a team total over for Baltimore. Tigers and the Royals. Fulmer on the mound for the Detroit Tigers. Uh, a horrendous 8.17 ERA on the season. Hasn't gotten a win yet. And Bubik on the mound for the uh, Royals. He's 1-6 in six with a mm-hmm. close to 4 ERA here. The line in this game is the Royals minus 145. Detroit Tigers plus 135. Uh, this is a hard game for me to handicap. Uh, I was thinking maybe going with over the total of nine and a half, but uh, I think this is probably going to be a pass game for me. Any thoughts for you? I've got one angle that I like just because the teams are going in such opposite directions. The Royals are actually playing some pretty good ball right now. Crush um, the Cardinals. Crush tonight. the Cardinals. I think they won that series. And they're, you, I think they're eight games under 500. I mean, they're not making the playoffs, but, like, they're actually putting it together. Uh, I'm looking at them to go ahead and win in the first five, um, just on the money line. Get, you're getting plus money on that right now. I like that because this Fulmer guy, he, like you said, look at that eight. 0.17 ERA. That's that's pretty rough. Uh, Bubich, you know, first couple times through the uh, order, he's usually a pretty solid pitcher. And since Ron Gardenhire retired, the Detroit Tigers aren't really playing. So look at the uh, Royals to get three runs at least in the first five innings would be my guess. And uh, rough Fulmer up. I saw this line and uh... – I, I had to guess that Lance Lynn was on the mound for the Rangers because uh, there's no reason why the Rangers would only be plus 120 if he wasn't on the mound. And and that's the Rangers against the Astros. Astros minus 130, Rangers plus 120 on the overnight line, over under seven and a half right now, seven and a half, eight. Uh, man, it's just it, – it could be a spot to back the Rangers, you would think, with Lynn on the mound. Uh, did he have a rough outing last time? I can't remember. I think his he last did. two starts have been pretty atypical for him from what he was doing earlier in the season. Um, yeah, Javier on the mound for the, mm-hmm. the Astros, you know, 3.33 ERA. You got to think that this is a spot where the Rangers could pull out a victory, but uh, this is a pass game for me as well. I, yeah, I, I want to force it just because Lance Lynn's on the mound and the Astros have been playing so terrible. But, yeah, let's go ahead and look the other way. Milwaukee Brewers against St. Louis Cardinals. Milwaukee's minus 125. St. Louis plus 120 over under seven and a half. And uh, the the two pitchers in this game are going to be Burns for Mm -hmm. Milwaukee, who's having a very solid season. He's 4-0 with a 1.77 ERA with a whip under one. And against Kim, who's also had a very solid season for the Cardinals, 2-0, 1.59 ERA, whip under one as well at .97. Uh, it's going to be a tight one here. Maybe looking for a first five under. You are reading my mind. 
Um, this Burns kid, I think he leads the NL in strikeouts per game or per nine. I think he's like right around 13. The Cardinals strike out a lot. Um, so something I'm looking specifically here, you know, I had my Yankees first five love, but the Brewers are actually just two spots behind them in that same stat. They're profitable. They're plus 14.73 units and an ROI of 7.72%. So the Cardinals, they're down in the bottom five as far as the stat goes. I'm looking at the Milwaukee Brewers' first five on the run line. Um, it's plus 150 right now. So um, I'm looking at that first five under. And, you know, Kim, uh, we talked about him a couple starts now for him. He's, he's playing really well. So yeah next game on the board we got the oakland athletics who are currently leading the dodgers right now four to three Mm -hmm. uh in the eighth inning and uh they're plus 185 against the dodgers minus two dollars uh we got walker bueller on the mound for the dodgers one and oh 3.86 era with a whip about one and you got a uh, mike fires here who's kind of struggled at times this season he is 6-2, and two, though, but he's 4.67 ERA. He's been prone to give up uh, some runs uh, in some games this season, even though, you know, I thought he was going to be a little bit more dominant going into this year. Uh, it's hard to handicap this one, but you got to think that if you're going to pick a side, you know, maybe roll with the A's at plus 185. Yeah, you know, it's they, – they locked that division up, so that's pretty good news for them. That's awesome. Um for my futures uh no true opinion here ira i just it's, it's a weird one we and you know call it a cop out but like you're gonna see some of this weirdness this these last few games i mean the season is wrapping up and i think people are forgetting that and they're just betting on these games like normal but that's true good point um you've got to take that into perspective and i honestly think that's why i've been missing on some bets because i just you know i see baseball and it's like bam i'm gonna bet on it like normal but these platoons are doing different things guys are shutting down and like you know in Dalton simmons for the angels their stud shortstop he decided he's not going to play the rest of the year it's not everyday news um you just you got to be keen I mean, that's kind of why I've been not really posting too many picks on right. the Twitter machine because, um, you know, there's only a few more days left of baseball and, and exactly your point. You know, a lot of things are happening. A lot of people, you know, people have clinched. People are resting. People aren't playing. People are opting out, things like that. So um, you got you to gotta follow the news. You got to bet this last week of the MLB season pretty, pretty uh, cautiously. And that's just kind of why I haven't made too many plays in baseball on Twitter. Um, but that's, that, that's my reason why you haven't heard too much from me in terms of plays there. But, uh, you know, we're still rolling along with the NBA. You made a, got a winner tonight with the over 212. Mm. Uh, I forgot to post yesterday, but I had the over in the Nuggets game uh, yesterday as well and uh, won that. But, yeah, I forgot to post that to, to, to Twitter. Uh, I'll try to do a better job. But, you know, sometimes when you don't do it as often as every day and put, post your plays, you kind of forget. But uh, I'll get back into the groove here in a minute, especially with the postseason coming around with the MLB. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Devin, I know you want to talk a little uh, college football Thursday night action. we got UAB South Alabama. UAB was minus six and a half, over under 47 and a half. Uh, I know nothing about these two teams, so I'm going to lay this one up to you and see if you have any words of wisdom on this one. Okay, Jon Snow. No, (laughs) that was a dumb joke. Um, (laughs) uh, It's late. late. You get a pass. Thanks, buddy. Starting with UAB, man, like, I'm just going to read off their defensive numbers from last year, their rankings. And again, they play in the Conference USA. Do with that with what you will. But, I mean, they played some pretty solid non-con teams uh, last year. So, they held Tennessee to 30 points. Um, So, scoring defense, they were 28th in the country, 21.6 points per game. uh, 20th in rushing defense, um, 8th in passing defense, and 8th in total defense in the whole country. UAB, the Blazers. And remember, their program was cut out about two years ago, three years ago. So they didn't have football for a long time. Um, So this is a new and exciting program again. Uh, Nine returning offensive starters, all but one of their linemen came back. They have um, eight 
I'm sorry, 10, 10 seniors on offense, 10 seniors on offense. I'm looking for them to cover that six and a half. I'm glad it dropped under seven because I think they are a touchdown better team. Uh, their quarterback, Tyler Johnston, the third, watch this kid. He's exciting, especially when he throws it to Myron Mitchell, Austin Watkins, two big bodied receivers. They go and get the ball. Um, one thing I do like about South Alabama, and we'll talk about them a little bit, is just the fact that they play in the Sun Belt. I talked about the Sun Belt and turn it into the Fun Belt, such and such. Uh, they don't have as much continuity as UAV. And I've actually backed South Alabama a couple times this year already, and they've helped me out. Um, but they have some inconsistencies within their backfield. You know, they're still looking to get a full-time starter in their quarterback, Desmond Trotter. He started the last four games last year. Um, the Jags need someone to step up with him. He's young still. Um, showed some flashes, some good things, but the offense as a whole, you definitely need to, you know, do a little bit better job keeping the ball. They turn it over a lot, and they did early in the season so far. Uh, like I said, not as many returning starters. I don't have a side – or I'm sorry, I don't have a total play. I'm kind of just leaning on um, UAB to get things done. They have a very potent offense. And uh, look for them to maybe uh, cover the first half over themselves is going to be my call on that. All right, we got some NBA to talk about. One game on the board for Thursday, and that's the Los Angeles Lakers against the Denver Nuggets. Nuggets uh, making this series a little interesting at two games to one with a nice little win uh, a couple of days last night. Yeah, last night. Uh, all the days are the same. Thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lakers minus six over under 214 and a half. And this is, uh, you're seeing a total that's rising throughout the series, 214 and a half here now. Probably going to get up to 215, 215 and a half by the time it's all said and done tomorrow. Um, Nuggets plus six. Uh, this is kind of where I make the number here, I would say. Um, it's going to be a slugfest. I look to bet this game live if the Lakers can get a 10, 12 point lead early in the first or second quarter. Try to get the Nuggets plus 10 and a half, plus 11 and a half. That's the number I feel comfortable with with the Nuggets tomorrow, tomorrow night or tonight if you're listening on Thursday. Uh, that's my kind of analysis for the Lakers Nuggets game. Any thoughts for you? Yeah, so to your point, 215, 215 and a half, that's actually where I'm seeing in some places that it opened that at that. Um, I love your live take on it. You know, as we know, Ira, you are the live betting guru for us. And Thank you, um, thank you. I, I, I was kind of looking at Lakers first half just because they cover it so well. Um, so it, you'd probably be getting three, three and a half in some spots. Jokic over nine and a half rebounds is a prop I'm looking at. I'm I'm thinking he'll probably get at least 11. So, um, yeah, I think he had a double double with 12 rebounds before halftime last game. So, all right. Any other games you want to talk about before we get out of here? I think that about does it for me, man. All right. As always, I'm at Iris Silver Magic. Devin's at D-A-L-E-007. Make sure you go check out manscaped.com. Type in the promo code HoopBall20 for 20% off and free shipping. We are a HoopBall presentation. We're also on the Twitter machine at HoopBall Gaming. If I didn't say it already, it's late here Wednesday night. So if I didn't say it already, I'm at Iris Silver Magic. Devin's at D-A-L-E-007. Uh, please give us a follow, shout out, you know, interact with us. We're active. We'd love to hear from you guys. And uh, if you can, please give us a five-star review on iTunes. That would be fantastic. We love you guys. We appreciate all your support. And thanks for sticking with us. We have some fantastic show guests on the shows uh, Friday and Saturday. So make sure you stay tuned and listen to those. Devin, it's been a pleasure, buddy. And uh, I'm glad we did another one and we're back in the groove of things and we get to hang out again. I loved it too, man. It's just like old times. Just like old times. All right, Devin, we'll see you soon. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.